my god. First Halo CEA gets shadow dropped on PC, and now a new cannon fodder out of the blue. You sure Christmas was three months ago? Because it doesn't feel like it was. But in all seriousness, welcome back for another cannon fodder video, and no, that title ain't lying. Today, we saw the announcement of a new Halo book that focuses on Blue Team after the events of Halo 5. The hype is absolutely real, so let's dive right into this thing. Titled Halo Shadows of Reach and written by Troy Denning, the plot is described as follows. October 2559. It has been a year since the renegade artificial intelligence Cortana issued a galaxy-wide ultimatum, subjecting many worlds to martial law under the indomitable grip of her forerunner weapons. Outside her view, the members of Blue Team, John 117 the Master Chief, Fred 104, Kelly 087, and Linda 058 are assigned from the UNSC Infinity to make a covert insertion onto the ravaged planet Reach. Their former home and training ground, and the site of humanity's most cataclysmic military defeat near the end of the Covenant War, Reach still hides myriad secrets after all these years. Blue Team's mission is to penetrate the rubble-filled depths of Castle Base and recover top-secret assets locked away in Dr. Catherine Halsey's abandoned laboratory, assets which may prove to be humanity's last hope against Cortana. But Reach has been invaded by a powerful and ruthless alien faction who have their own reasons for being there. Establishing themselves as a vicious occupying force on the devastated planet, this enemy will soon transform Blue Team's simple retrieval operation into a full-blown crisis. And with the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance, mission failure is not an option. And on top of that, look at this cover art! This freaking cover art! <laughs> I could spend hours gushing, but let's get into the details. The book is set almost exactly a year after Halo 5 in October of 2559. As we can see on the cover, John and all of Blue Team are sporting, I'm gonna say it, Gen 3 Mjolnir. Strictly speaking, Blue Team's armor isn't confirmed yet to be Gen 3, but come on, it's Gen 3. That's Gen 3. I'll be curious though, to see if the new armor is addressed at all. Maybe we'll open with John reflecting on the new armor, or we'll actually get to see Halsey issuing it to Blue Team. Whatever the case, I hope so. I, I hope for the latter, but I hope for some acknowledgement. Anyway, though, like with John's armor, we can see that everyone else's armor is heavily influenced by the armor designs of the package from Halo Legends. Kelly and Fred's helmets almost one-to-one -one from Legends. Though, thankfully, it seems 343 didn't bring over Kelly's literal breastplates, and I'll assume she's not sporting heels. God damn it, Japan. But we can also see that Fred has knives sheathed under his shoulder pauldrons, just like in the package. The standout here is Linda, who never appeared in Halo Legends, though. Her basic body armor is the same as everyone else's, though her shoulder pauldrons are quite slimmer. Being a sniper, I would expect that she would want a smaller profile where possible, so this is a rather cool detail, I have to say. Also, in general, we can see that the shoulder armor for this Mjolnir moves independently of the main armor, a detail that was added to Mjolnir in Halo 4 that very sadly disappeared in Halo 5. I'm very excited to see that return here, and I hope that's the case in Halo Infinite. Going back to Linda, though, her new helmet definitely takes some design cues from her Halo 5 helmet, but it obviously lacks all the added scopes, similar to the Mark IV prototype that she sported in Halo Collateral Damage. I'm guessing with the created that there was a shortage on scopes, so Linda had to make some sacrifices. But seriously, it's an overall great design. If I had any point of criticism here, it would be that I wish that all their armors were back to being the same color, but, you know, whatever. There's a bit more that we can ultimately talk about with Blue Team, but we'll get back to the story details for now. We'll discuss more about Blue Team later. The description goes on to say that the Spartans are deployed from Infinity to covertly insert onto Reach to find something buried in Halsey's lab under Castle Base. This is where we get into the juicy speculation. For myself and others, the implications seemed fairly clear. Blue Team are going in to recover the remaining cloned brains of Dr. Halsey. If you're confused by that sentence, don't worry, I'll explain. In 2549, Dr. Halsey had a piece of her brain biopsied. This was used to make a series of clones of herself in an attempt to create a powerful AI for Operation Red Flag. These clones were rapidly grown with an emphasis on brain growth, the brains eventually harvested, Halsey's memories and brain patterns mapped onto them. One, labeled as H1, became the AI known as Cortana. 
If you're unaware, AIs like Cortana, aka smart AIs, are created using a deep neural scan of the human brain as a map for the AI pathways. This process destroys organic matter, however. Of the original 20 specimens Halsey created, at least three were kept in cryo storage for future experiments, though none were ever used beyond that to our knowledge. So, the basic thinking is that Blue Team are going to grab one of those cloned Halsey brains from Reach to create a new Cortana of sorts, something we've been theorizing about for a few years now, to combat Cortana, maybe even attempt to cure her. Maybe this plays into that CTN 0453-0 AI chip from last year's E3 trailer. Who knows? Of course, this isn't the only option. Halsey's lab is full of secrets and knowledge. In 2547, she performed an experiment using a slipspace drive and an AI seed, the goal being to create an AI contained within slipspace, meaning it would never run out of room to grow and thus never undergo rampancy. The experiment didn't go as planned, with the new AI spewing forth tons of data, much of it nonsensical to Halsey, before she lost contact with it. Maybe Blue Team are being sent to retrieve that data, Halsey believing that it may have some key to defeating Cortana. Alternatively, maybe there's a lost piece of Mjolnir tech there, an unknown Forerunner artifact, some extra data extracted from the Forerunner ship under Sword Base that she took with her after being evacuated by June. Honestly, anything is possible at this point. Regardless, I can't wait to find out what it is. The big question at this point is whether that solution is a MacGuffin for a more character-driven story, or if it will indeed figure into the plot of Halo Infinite. Whatever the case, it's going to be interesting to see Blue Team return to Reach. We kinda got a glimpse of that in Halo The Fall of Reach, the animated series, but I'll be honest, it was pretty underwhelming. With a book, we can really get into the heads of these characters and see how a return affects them. Moreover, I'll be extremely curious to see Blue Team, and John in particular, reflect on the events of Halo 5, Cortana's rise to power, maybe even their brief time in the cryptum at the end of Halo 5. Moving on, though, the book's description comes to an end by revealing that a new threat has appeared on Reach, a quote, powerful and ruthless alien faction. From the cover, we can see a number of Seraph fighters and what may be a CCS-class battlecruiser in the background, I'm not entirely sure. But either way, this means that the threat is a Covenant one. And by Covenant threat, I of course mean a faction left over after the fall of the Covenant. There are any number of choices out there, such as the Banished, the Keepers of the One Freedom, or Selene Neon's Covenant faction. I personally get a strong feeling for the Banished given the faction's popularity, and it's not like that wouldn't make any sense. Atriox didn't bring his full force to the Ark, just a sizable one. Though, why they're on Reach is anyone's guess, and honestly, I hope it's not the Banished. No offense to the Banished, that's just not what I want to see from this story. The Keepers of the One Freedom, a brute-led group that still believes in the Great Journey, makes a lot more sense to me, and it's one I'd really love to see because I love the Keepers, but they're always after more Forerunner artifacts, and we know Reach has plenty. Selene Neon would be another one that makes sense given that he, at the very least, still believes in Forerunner Godhood, and, you know, it might be good to bring him in just to wrap that story thread up. Alternatively, of course, it could be an entirely new faction. One idea that I've had, and I would absolutely love to see this, is a faction led by Kantar Utaral. For those unaware, Kantar was the second-in-command of the Fleet of Valiant Prudence, aka the fleet that invaded Reach starting on July 23rd. After the fleet's supreme commander, Ro Barutami, was killed when Long Night of Solace was split in two by a slipspace bomb, Kantar took over operational control of the fleet. He had a brief career after that, becoming a fleet master at some point and developing a battlegroup formation known as the Golden Path, but otherwise we've not heard much of him. Personally, I think it would be very interesting for the former fleet master to have returned to Reach to continue what Ro started seven years prior. The Supreme Commander wasn't merely interested in glassing yet another human world, he was after something very specific on Reach. He believed an artifact on the planet would lead to the Forerunner homeworld of Maithrillion. Going on a bit of a tangent, in the short story Promises to Keep from the anthology Halo Fractures, it was revealed that a Forerunner artifact kept within the planet, I use that term very loosely, was the source of the Forerunner's connection to the domain. This source, a precursor AI called Abaddon, had to be quote-unquote reset to save the domain after the firing of the Halo Array. 
When this was revealed, coupled with the knowledge of Ro looking for Maithrillian, it was theorized that perhaps the key to defeating Cortana would be to go to Reach, find the key to the domain that once housed Abaddon, and reset the domain once again or use it in some other manner against Cortana. Point is, one can't help but wonder if this theory is finally playing out in some manner. It seems like a bit of a long shot, I'll readily admit, but it would be awesome if that were to happen. That wraps up the book's description, but we're not done yet. The book represents the first piece of media set a good deal of time after Halo 5. Yes, we have Legacy of Onyx and Bad Blood, but the first is more concurrent with Halo 5 and the latter is set immediately after it, like minutes after it. With Shadows of Reach, a whole year has passed, the galaxy has changed, and with this we might get some hints at what to expect for Halo Infinite. I've already largely broken down the appearance of Blue Team, but I did say that there was more. When I first saw the image, I thought it might have been some fan art, something made in Source Filmmaker or Blender, the models looked so good. When I posted about my excitement on Twitter, my buddy Unicracken from Sins of the Prophets also noted that Blue Team looked to be 3D models. I'll admit this is a long shot too, but given the quality of these models, I can't help but wonder if Blue Team will actually be in Halo Infinite in some manner. Maybe not ever present like Halo 5, but perhaps in some manner. God, I hope so. For the last year and a half, I have been lamenting the potential absence of Blue Team from Halo Infinite, so any possible hint is like a godsend. But anyway, in addition to that, people have also been looking at the weapons Blue Team are holding. We can see that Linda has her Nornfang and Kelly has her MA5D Oathsworn, both of which have led people to wonder if Halo Infinite will use the Halo 4 and 5 sniper rifle and shotgun models. Most likely though, these weapons are there to avoid revealing any Halo Infinite models too early, and just because these are weapons that lore fans will appreciate seeing. But in addition to that, people have noticed that both John and Fred have MA-40s, leading some to wonder if the DMR won't be in Halo Infinite. This, of course, because Fred uses a DMR in Halo 5. In general, I wouldn't rely on a book cover to determine what weapons are going to be in a future game, but ultimately the reason for Fred using an MA-40 is because of the final thing we're going to talk about today. Back during E3, there was a lot of talk from 343 about how they wanted Infinite to somewhat echo Halo CE for fans to essentially be thrown into an existing conflict and told go, discovering the source and reasons for that conflict along the way. Well, it seems like 343 are really dedicated to that goal with this book. The title alone is an echo of Fall of Reach, but more than that, the cover is a huge homage to the original cover of Halo the Fall of Reach. We have John firing his AR, Kelly with her shotgun, Linda with her sniper rifle, and Fred in the background with an AR. The Seraphs on Shadows of Reach even take the place of the Banshees from the Fall of Reach. This, in my opinion, is nostalgia done right. It's evocative of the past, but, I hope, not detrimental to the story. Troy Denning has done an amazing job with every Halo book he's written so far, so I have no doubt he'll nail it here once again. Halo Shadows of Reach, a Master Chief story, will release on September 22nd, later this year. So are you as hyped as I am? How do you feel about this book? Let me know in the comments below. And because I've seen this talked about all over on social media, don't necessarily expect this book to lead directly into Halo Infinite like Halo The Fall of Reach did for Halo CE. Shadows of Reach is set in October of 2559, Halo Infinite is set sometime after September of 2561. At minimum, that's almost a two year difference. This book very well may tie into the game, but I don't think it's gonna lead into it. Not unless there's some huge time skip in the book or flashbacks in the game. Anyway, we'll see. Long time off. That's all for now though, I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Canaanites.